in the last lecture we asked the basic question that is what is the relationship between the current distribution and the radiation pattern of an antenna. We had analyzed the problem of the dipole where the current distribution was given and from there we found out the radiation patterns. We also saw as the length of the dipole changes the radiation pattern changes. But this still did not give us a good understanding of how the current distribution affects the radiation pattern. Therefore, we ask this basic question that if the current distribution is given what would be the radiation pattern or conversely if I wanted to have a radiation pattern what should be the current distribution. So, essentially we started with some arbitrary current distribution which is complex in nature. So, it is having an amplitude and a phase which is varying in, in some direction and we had considered only a simple linear uh, problem. So, the current is uh, distributed along a line and then simply by using the superposition of the radiation fields generated by different current elements, we got a very important relationship between the radiation pattern and the current distribution and that characteristic or that relationship is the Fourier transform relationship. So, we have a very important conclusion that is the radiation pattern of an antenna is the Fourier transform of its current distribution. And this property is very useful and very important property because what that means is if the current distribution is given you have a unique radiation pattern and vice versa that means if a radiation pattern is given there is a unique current distribution which would give me that radiation pattern. However, there are a few things to be noted when we use this Fourier transform relationship. So, let me write this expression which we got last time for the Fourier transform relationship. Note here this quantity which was the radiation field which is now is a function of L well R is the cosine of the angle theta and this theta has nothing to do with the spherical coordinate system. This is the angle which is measured from the axis or, or, or from the line for the current distribution and the distance which we got here x prime is the normalized distance with respect to the wavelength. This is a constant quantity. So, since the radiation pattern is a normalized pattern we do not worry about these constants which come here in the integral. So, we can say in general that the radiation pattern will be given by the integral which is the Fourier integral where this is the current distribution as a function of distance and this is the Fourier term. So, we now have a Fourier relationship between these two, but the parameters are not the angle which is in which the radiation pattern is measured theta and also the space the parameter is not the absolute distance, but the Fourier pair is the cosine of the angle which is nothing but the direction cosine and the normalized distance on the on the antenna. So, the important thing to note here is that we have a Fourier pair. So, we have Fourier transform relationship, but the Fourier pair is direction cosine and normalize normalize distance. So, if I have a current distribution then I from the from the current distribution I find out the direction which is theta cosine of that is the parameter which is the Fourier parameter and distance which is normalized with respect to wavelength is the special parameter for, for the antenna. So, the direction cosine will be denoted by quantity L this is the Fourier pair with a normalized quantity which is x by lambda. And then we can write now the Fourier relationship in general without worrying about the proportionality constants that E of L that will be equal to the integral minus infinity to infinity the current distribution which is a function of x by lambda which we put as 
x prime e to the power j 2 pi x prime l d x prime. Now, if I look at this integral, yes, I can find out the value of the electric field once the j is given in terms of the normalized uh, distance, then the Fourier integral can be evaluated for all values of l from minus infinity to infinity. However, what should be kept in mind is the l is essentially the direction cosine. So, if you have the, the, the current distribution, the angle is going to vary for this current distribution from 0 to pi and L is nothing but the cosine of that angle. So, L is going to vary only from minus 1 to plus 1. So, though this integral can be evaluated for all values of L from minus infinity to infinity, only that portion of the Fourier transform is useful which lies in the range of L from minus 1 to plus 1. So, this range of L then we can call as the visible range of L. So, mathematically if I look at it, I can get the E value for all possible L's, but those E values which will be lying for L's corresponding to beyond minus 1 and plus 1, those electric field will not be the physical electric fields. So, mathematically this relation is true for any value of L, but physically if I see only that portion which lies in range of minus 1 to plus 1 for L, that is the pattern which will represent the radiation pattern of the current distribution. So, now essentially what we are saying is we are having a range of L which will go from minus infinity this is L which will go to plus infinity will go to minus infinity. So, once the j is given to you the practically the radiation pattern is, is written on this. However, this is L equal to 0 and this is the only range minus 1 to plus 1 which corresponds to the physical radiation pattern. So, this range we can call as the visible range of L which is from minus 1 to plus 1. So, what that means is we can have the radiation pattern fixed in this which is same and we can change the pattern here without affecting the radiation pattern. So, now if I look at this problem like a mathematical problem, yes the E of L is defined which gives me the radiation pattern and then I can arbitrarily choose a function in the range from 1 to infinity, I can arbitrarily choose a function from minus 1 to infinity. But when I choose this arbitrary functions here, the Fourier transform is going to get affected. What that means is keeping the radiation pattern same in the visible range. I do not have now the unique current distribution. So, when we derive this relationship, it appeared that we have a unique relationship between the current distribution and the radiation pattern. However, since the L range is limited to minus 1 to plus 1, you may have infinitely possible current distributions which may give me the same radiation pattern in the visible range and they might be different in the in the, in the in the range which is beyond the visible range. That means, knowing the knowing the current distribution finding radiation pattern is unique, but knowing radiation pattern finding current distribution is not unique. So, this relationship which was very looked very attractive in the first look that is if I know this relationship now I can invert the problem and say I want to realize certain radiation pattern just by taking a Fourier transform, I should be able to know what the current distribution is. There is no uniqueness into that, that means there are large number of current distributions which may give me the same radiation pattern in the visible range. One may ask a question, is it possible to really arbitrarily choose the radiation pattern in this range which is beyond the visible range? The answer probably will be no you may not arbitrarily choose this function because when you talk about this function suddenly 
you cannot change this function. So there has to be continuity of the function. Maybe derivatives also have to be continuous and so on. So the choice of current distribution which you will get will be restrictive. But the important thing to note here is that there is no unique current distribution which will give a given radiation pattern in the visible range. Though the converse is true, that means the current distribution is given to you, it, is, it will give the unique radiation pattern. So the analysis problem, that means when the current distribution is given to you and finding radiation pattern, this is analysis problem, is a straightforward problem. But the inverse problem, which is what is called synthesis problem, that when the radiation pattern is given to you, finding the current distribution, that problem is not that straightforward because there is no uniqueness in, in, in that relationship. The another thing to note from the Fourier integral is that this is simply telling you the variation of the current as a function of space. It still does not tell you the basic radiation characteristics of the current. What do I mean by that? Let us imagine a situation. Let us say I am, I am having a current sheet which is which is having a current which is vertically flowing like that and this is the sort of sheet which, which we are having and I want to ask what is the what is the radiation which will come from this current sheet. Now assuming that this width of this is very very small, the current distribution if I look at in this plane of the paper, it is uniform, the current is flowing in this direction. So this problem, the current distribution if I look at, it is a constant current distribution. So I can, I can this is the direction I can take as x, I can measure the angle from this direction. Now since this current sheet can be visualized as a combination of small, small current elements which are oriented in the vertical direction, this current sheet can be thought of as a collection of Hertz dipoles. So essentially I have a Hertz dipole here, so this thing can be divided into small, small segment. Each one can be treated as a Hertz dipole and then the total radiation field which we will get will be superposition of the fields which we will get from each of the Hertz dipoles. So since we know now the radiation pattern for the Hertz dipole, let us say now I, I measure the angle theta from this direction, that is what we do for Hertz dipole. That is the way we have analyzed it, keeping the Hertz dipole along the z direction. So I have angle theta in this. So this is the angle, say this angle is theta. So angle with respect to x, this x axis is 90 minus theta. So in the Fourier integral, we had defined the cosine of the angle which is which the current distribution this thing makes with the x axis that angle is 90 minus theta. So in this case we have L which is cosine of pi by 2 minus theta which is equal to sine of theta. And I can write down now without worrying about whether this is a Hertz dipole or what a uniform current distribution. So I can write its, its Fourier transform. But note here that when there is a current element which is like a Hertz dipole, this is not distributing uniformly in all directions. The radiation is not going uniformly in all directions. When we applied superposition in the for getting the Fourier integral, we assume that each of the current element radiates uniformly and we simply have a superposition of the fields from different current elements. However, now this current element intrinsically has a pattern which is sin theta radiation pattern. We know that when we analyze the Hertz dipole, we saw that along the axis of the dipole there is no radiation. This current element is capable of radiating perpendicular to it and therefore the radiation pattern for the Hertz dipole is sin theta. So we get the radiation pattern from Fourier transform relationship which will be corresponding to only the current distribution. But the total radiation pattern has to be multiplication of the intrinsic radiation pattern of the Hertz dipole with the radiation pattern which you get from the Fourier transform relationship. 
So, the original radiation pattern which the current element has that is not reflected into the Fourier transform relationship. It is simply Fourier transform relationship is only between the distribution of the current and the radiation pattern. Whatever are the radiation characteristics of the basic current element or basic radiating element, those have to be superimposed on the radiation pattern which we get from Fourier transform relationship. So, in this case let us say this was if this was a current sheet the current distribution will be a, a, a distribution which is like that. Let us say the length of this current sheet is L. So, I have here a current distribution which is non zero over length L and is 0 beyond that. Without losing generality let us say the current amplitude is unity. So, this current j of x is equal to unity over this range and is 0 here. This is, this is L for x less than or equal to equal to L and is 0 otherwise. We can now use the Fourier transform uh, property to find out what is the radiation pattern where L now is given by sin theta. So, the radiation pattern E L from Fourier transform E L that will be equal to 0 to L j of x which is unity over this. So, this is 1 e to the power j 2 pi and let us say the distance which I which we have here the normalize this L is the, the length in normalized quantity. So, let us say this is normalized length x prime this quantity will be x prime L t x prime. This integral is very very straightforward. So, essentially from here you will get e to the power j 2 pi x prime L divided by j 2 pi L limit 0 to L. <coughs> I can substitute for this limits. So, this, this gives me e to the power j 2 pi L L minus 1 divided by j 2 pi L. For radiation pattern since we are interested in the magnitude of the electric field we can do some simple simplification to the expression. We can take e to the power j pi l l common from here. So, this will be equal to e to the power j pi l l e to the power j pi l l minus e to the power minus j pi l l divided by you can say 2 j and take this pi l outside. So, this is pi of l. Now, this quantity is nothing but the sin of pi l l. So, this we can write as sin of pi l l upon let us multiply numerator and denominator by capital L. So, this is pi L L L e to the power j pi L into L. L is the constant for the given given aperture size or given current distribution length this quantity is constant. So, L is constant 
this quantity gives you only the phase term. So, the magnitude of this is unity. So, the radiation pattern essentially is, is given by this, which is the amplitude variation as a function of angle. And in this case, the angle is the direction cosine, which is sin theta. So, we get the E of L amplitude that will be equal to sin of phi L L divided by phi L L. This function is nothing but what is called the sink function of L L. So, this is the sink of L L. So, the radiation pattern for a uniform current distribution in this plane will be a sink function of this product capital L and, and L small l which is the direction cosine. Now, this is the radiation pattern we would get without considering the current elements which are forming this current sheet. We simply have we simply have taken here the current distribution which is uniform and without worrying about what is the direction of the current we simply found the current the current distribution and radiation pattern which is essentially given by this. However, since we know that the intrinsic Hertz dipole has a radiation pattern sin theta, the total radiation pattern has to be multiplication of this radiation pattern with the radiation pattern of the Hertz dipole, because the whole this radiation pattern will be weighted by the radiation pattern of the Hertz dipole. So, the total radiation pattern then we can write as E of theta that will be equal to this quantity which is sin of pi L, L is sin theta upon pi L sin theta multiplied by sin theta which is the radiation pattern of the Hertz dipole so multiplied by sin theta. So, that is the radiation pattern you will get if you treat this is like a current sheet which is in this in the plane of the paper and the currents are flowing upwards and if this width is much smaller compared to the wavelength. So, that the current can be assumed constant in that direction. Once you understand this then this concept can be essentially expanded to any arbitrary current distribution. So, here if you understand the radiation characteristics of this thin current sheet, maybe understanding radiation pattern for other current distribution will be quite straightforward. So, knowing this current distribution and the radiation pattern, now we can investigate the characteristics of this. Firstly, as we said this quantity L has to lie between minus 1 and plus 1. This is the sink function which which will be varying like that like this. So, if this is taken as unity for the sink function which will correspond to when this quantity is, is 0. So, we have here theta equal to 0 that is where the sink function is maximum. So, this quantity is theta equal to 0. As I change the value of theta from in this case now theta will vary from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, though this angle was going from 0 to pi, but theta will go from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, the range for the radiation pattern which correspond to theta equal to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, this is theta equal to minus pi by 2, this is theta equal to plus pi by 2. So, this is the range then is the visible range that means, this is the radiation pattern which you are going to see actually in the in the space as the radiation pattern. This portion of the radiation pattern 
will not be the visible portion of the radiation pattern. So that means we will get the now nulls in this radiation pattern at this location, at this location, at this location, at this location. And as we know from the property of the sink function that the nulls would correspond to when this quantity is multiple sub pi. That means when this quantity L L is an integer that is the location we will have nulls. So, if I write in terms of L this is theta equal to 0 that would correspond to L equal to 0 also. So, the first null will occur when this quantity is equal to 1. So, L will be 1 upon L. So, this location is 1 upon L. This will be minus 1 upon L. For L, this will be 2 upon L minus 2 upon L. So, this is minus 2 upon L. This location will be minus 2 upon L location. So, the nulls will be given by the directions for which the sign of the angle is 1 upon L or multiples of 1 upon L. So, from here well, this should be plus 2 upon L. So, from here now we can find out the directions of the radiation pattern where the radiation goes to 0 what is called the nulls of the radiation pattern. The sink function is a very well studied function and we know many other properties of the sink function and that is the first negative low which we get here this is about 21 percent of this peak value. So, if we take normalize this is unity this value will be minus 0 0.21 approximately this value next value will be plus 0 0.13 and so on. So, this thing then we can call as the side lobe of your radiation pattern. So, for this current sheet you will have the first side lobe which will be about 21 percent of the main beam. The second side lobe will be about 13 percent of the main beam and the nulls will be equispaced which are separated by 1 over L. So, from here we can get some conclusions that is nulls are separated by 1 by L equal to L. First side lobe is 21 percent second side lobe is about 13 percent and so on. Note here the nulls are equispaced in the L domain. They are not equispaced in theta domain because you are having a non relationship between L and theta. L is sin theta. So, in L domain the nulls are equispaced. So, if I take this as a plot of as a function of L then all these nulls are equispaced, but if I convert them to theta then the nulls in the angular zone will not be equispaced with respect to the, the, the main beam. So, we have now the, the basic understanding developed for the radiation pattern from the current distribution. Also, we can note some interesting thing, one more interesting thing from this pattern and that is if we increase the length of this current sheet that means, if the L becomes larger and larger this nulls will become closer and closer because when the L increases this null will come closer and closer. So, the angular separation between these two points what is called the beam width between the first nulls that will go on reducing that means, my main beam which is given by this will become narrower and narrower. 
or in other words as the size of this current distribution this aperture changes your antenna will become more and more directive because the beam width will become smaller and smaller and as we have seen earlier when the beam width becomes smaller the directivity of the antenna increases so by increasing the length of the the this current sheet the directivity of this antenna can be increased let us go to the next level of usage of this fourier transform relationship and that is let us say that now this current sheet gave a maximum which was in theta equal to 0 direction which was in this direction and then there were some nulls which were in some other directions let us now ask a question suppose i wanted to tilt the main beam from theta equal to 0 to some other direction so in general we fourier transform relationship whatever we have we can ask a question suppose i wanted to change the direction of the main beam so in this case i had some current distribution for which let us say the main beam was at l equal to 0 what should i do to the current distribution so the main beam will be shifted to some other direction which is let us say l naught so i wanted to shift the radiation pattern by l naught so we can we can go substitute for l equal to l naught so we say let us say our interest is to change the beam direction by a lot. So initially we had a beam in certain direction could be 0 could be something else but with respect to that let us say I wanted to now change the direction of the beam by a lot and that is possible by simply shifting the radiation pattern in the in the L domain. The question we are asking is if I wanted to translate this electric field on L axis by L naught what is the requirement on the current distribution what way the current distribution will, will get affected. So I can substitute for L E of L minus L naught where now the pattern is shifted by L naught that will be equal to minus infinity to infinity j of x prime e to the power j 2 pi x prime l minus l naught into dx prime. We can take this quantity out here e to the power j 2 pi x prime l naught. So, that is minus infinity to infinity j of x prime e to the power minus j 2 pi x prime l naught into e to the power j 2 pi x prime l d x prime. So, we can say that the radiation pattern which is shifted by L naught is the Fourier transform of this quantity. This term is the Fourier term. So, now the new current distribution which, which will correspond to this radiation pattern which is shifted version of the original one is this current distribution. So, what is change in this? You had the original current distribution and this current distribution now is multiplied by this quantity which is e to the power minus j 2 pi x prime l naught. L naught is constant. So, that means this quantity is this is the phase which is varying linearly as a function of x prime as a function of distance along the along the current distribution. So, any linear phase change in the current distribution will rotate the radiation pattern in theta domain or in L domain. So, this is what is called the shift property of Fourier transform 
that if your function is shifted in one domain, it is equivalent to having a phase gradient in the other domain and vice versa. So, whenever now we want to shift the beam of the antenna, essentially we have to introduce the phase gradient. So, in this case, if initially let us say the phase distribution was constant, so let us say this was the initial phase of the current distribution for Jx. Now, we have to introduce a phase shift which is negative of this. So, now the phase shift will be will be like that, where the slope of this line will be equal to minus 2 pi into L naught minus 2 pi L naught. So, if I take the current distribution original current distribution and if I introduce a phase gradient for on the current distribution essentially the beam will be shifted in the direction of L naught. This is the principle essentially used in what is called phased array scanning, where physically the antennas are not rotated, only the phase gradient is changed on the antenna structure and because of that the direction of the radiation changes. And this thing, this thing can be done electronically, so we can change this phase gradient very rapidly and as a result the beam can really scan in the, in the, in the space at the rate at which the, the, the phase is changing on the current distribution. So, without mechanical movement now the radiation pattern or the beam of the antenna can be scanned in, in space by simply changing the, the phase gradient. We can explore some other possibilities of Fourier transform. When the current distribution is uniform as we are taken here like a current sheet, we get a radiation pattern which is given by sink function which is this and the important thing about this sink function is the side lobe level is minus 21 percent the first side lobe and this has nothing to do with the size of the antenna. So, this quant this number is independent of L. So, no matter what value of L you take the side lobe level is always going to be 21 percent. As we know from our earlier discussion that the side lobes are essentially leakage of power in unwanted direction. So, ideally we would like to reduce the side lobe level to as small a level as possible because this is the one which is a wastage of power. So, by reducing the side lobe level essentially we can increase the efficiency of radiation in the given direction. So, in practice it is always desirable to reduce the side lobe level to as small a value as possible. So, as long as the current is uniform, there is no possibility of now reducing side lobes because side lobe is always going to be about 21 percent and that is where now we can go from the understanding of the Fourier transform and that is this side lobe level which are the ripple in the Fourier transform, they are essentially because of the discontinuities in the current distribution in the space. So, if I could avoid the sharpness in the current distribution, then the ripple or the amplitude of the side lobe can be reduced. But for precisely that is what we can do, what is called the tapering of the illumination. That means, instead of having a current distribution which is uniform, if I slowly taper it towards the end from the Fourier transform. We can, we can show that the ripple in the Fourier transform will reduce that means, the side lobe level of the radiation pattern will reduce. So, instead of having a current distribution if I take let us say original current distribution was, was like that and that was the radiation pattern. So, this is j of x prime and this is e of l. So, if let us say this current distribution is 1, you get a radiation pattern which will be sink function this is 1. 
if we now taper this current distribution to look something like that then the side lobe level will come down because now the the sharpness discontinuity of the current is reduced so you get now a current distribution which will look like that so side lobe level is reduced if i take the current distribution which will look something like that then the side lobe level will be further reduced so it will be something like this and so on so this is the current distribution let us say number 2 this is the one number 3 so this will be radiation pattern for number 2 this will be radiation pattern for number 3 so by tapering the current distribution essentially we can reduce the side lobes of the radiation pattern however when we reduce the current amplitude on the edges of the current distribution that means when i increase the taper the effective width of the antenna radiation pattern that also gets altered so by putting the current taper essentially the beam width of the antenna becomes larger or in other words the directivity of the antenna reduces so for the same physical antenna structure which is this current distribution if i put the current taper then the directivity of the antenna will reduce so we see two effects of the current taper one is by increasing the current taper the side lobe level of the radiation pattern reduces secondly the beam width of the antenna increases or the directivity of the antenna reduces and this we can see also from simple arguments that whenever we have a current distribution which is like this effectively we can define some effective current distribution which will be now shorter than this as we define 3 db points so we can define 3 db points for the current distribution so we will have effectively a current distribution which will be smaller than l and therefore the beam width which is 1 over l that will essentially increase because the effective width of the current distribution is decreased so these are now certain properties of the the fourier transform which can very easily be used to investigate the radiation characteristics of different current distributions or different antenna the most important property which we can use from fourier transform is what is called the convolution property that is we know from two functions let us say the two functions are some f1x and f2x if i take these two functions and let us say they have their fourier transform which are given by capital f so we have two functions which are having a fourier pair f1x which is fourier transform is f1 of l and we have another function f2 of x is a fourier transform of f2 of l then we know that the fourier transform of product of these two function is the convolution of the fourier transform that means if i multiply these two function f1x f2x that will be the fourier transform will be convolution of these two so that will be f1l on convolution of f2 l and same is true for reverse that if i convolve these two functions f1x convolve with f2x that will be the product of the fourier transform so that is f1l f2l so this property the convolution property by using this property now we can 
decompose a complex antenna problem into simpler problems and we can find the radiation pattern very quickly for the complex current distributions. Let us take a simple case. Let us say we want to find out the radiation pattern for a triangular distribution. So, let us say I want to find if the current distribution is given by this. This is my g of x prime of some length L. What will be the radiation pattern of this current distribution? Now, this current distribution can be thought of as convolution of two rectangular current distribution of length L by 2. So, this is equivalent to a current distribution which is convolved with a current distribution identical to this, where this length is L by 2. By two. So, a triangular current distribution is convolution of the two current distribution which are uniform current distributions. So, this is since now the currents are the convolution, the Fourier transform the radiation pattern will be multiplication of the Fourier transform of these two. So, if I say this is a rectangle we know the Fourier transform for this which is sin sinc of L into L where L is now L by 2. So, this is L L upon 2 this is now the Fourier transform of this. The Fourier transform of this also will be will be same which is again sinc of L L by 2. So, the radiation pattern of this current distribution will be multiplication of these two radiation patterns for Fourier transform because the current distribution is a convolution of these two current distributions. So, the radiation pattern would be multiplication of, of the of the two radiation patterns. So, we have a situation which is like this where the individual current distributions are convolutions. So, the final radiation pattern will be a product of the two radiation patterns. So, that means the radiation pattern for this current distribution will be E of L for this will be multiplication of these two. So, it will be sinc square L L by 2. So, the pattern which you had the, the sinc function when we have a triangular distribution it will be the radiation pattern will be square of this, this function. So, that means this amplitude which was 0.2 now that will become 0 0.04 approximately. So, the side lobe level will reduce to only 4 percent and this side lobe will be 1 percent and so on 1.6 percent. So, the triangular current distribution will give the side lobe level as low as 4 percent compared to the current distribution which is uniform current distribution and that is what we argued whenever we put a current taper that is what we have done here now we have tapered the current distribution. So, whether it goes to 0 at the ends the side lobe level reduces. So, in this case we will get the side lobe level. approximately about 4 percent. So, what, what we have seen now? The Fourier transform property which we have got that is a very very important property for investigating the radiation characteristics of antennas. We can once we know the current distribution on the antenna then using the Fourier transform property we can find out the radiation pattern of the antenna. We can also ask a question if I want to modify the radiation pattern like if I wanted to tilt the radiation pattern by certain angle what should be the changes in the current distribution and we saw if we introduce a phase gradient in the current distribution then the whole radiation pattern will be tilted. 
by, by the shift property of Fourier transform. We also saw that by putting the taper on the current distribution, we can reduce the side lobe level of the antenna radiation pattern. So, this property once you understand Fourier transform properly, then many of the radiation characteristics of the antenna can be visualized in a, in a quite straightforward manner. The problem that knowing the radiation pattern, how do we find the current distribution? That problem is still difficult problem, because as we said there is no uniqueness into that problem and there may be many solutions to the problem. However, it looks now after the discussion that since the radiate, radiation pattern and the current distribution has Fourier transform relationship, the control of the current is the, the sole mechanism of controlling the radiation pattern. So, if we can control radiation, the current distribution on the antenna, then we can control the radiation pattern also. However, as we saw in the case of let us say dipole, we excite the antenna at the center, current distribution is not in our control, current get decided by, by its own. So, I do not have a good control over of the current distribution. Also, while changing the length of the antenna, the current distribution changes, but also the terminal impedance also changes. So, we have now the current distribution which is related to the radiation pattern is coupled to the terminal impedances also. So, we are looking for now some mechanism by which we can control the current independently without affecting the terminal performance of the antenna. So, that mechanism by which the current can be independently controlled without affecting the impedance characteristics or terminal characteristics of the antenna, that is what essentially we do in the arrays where different antenna elements are excited with different current. So, you manipulate the current distribution and therefore, you manipulate the radiation pattern, but the terminal characteristics of the antenna remains the same. So, we will take off from here and then we will go into the investigation of the antenna arrays, which give, gives much bigger freedom in designing the antenna radiation patterns. <laughs>